Ladies and gentlemen and everybody between all, welcome back to Overanalyzed Adventures. We're at the home stretch now, folks. There's only a couple episodes left of Alum, so let's keep on keeping on and jump right back into the game. Alright, I've had enough. We're gonna fight fire with fire. The universe that Alum exists in is a very bizarre one the more and more I overanalyze it. Now, you'd think that the Rogations would have been driven to action after the majority of their members were heinously killed in an explosion. But no, they did nothing. But now, for no particular reason other than our main character Alum is hanging out with an angel, so he's unavailable because, God forbid, we see Alum go through any character development. No, 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 that'd be tricky. So instead, we have a new main character, and it's Dash. You. And you see, in the world of Alum, the only people that do anything are main characters. So in turn, that means Dashu's finally going to do something. Hurrah! But don't you worry about the rest of the rogations. They'll hang out and do nothing. Because the altruist works in mysterious ways. Yeah. Cosmos. We're going to take down one of the heat pillars. Let's see how pleased Invidious Umbra is with that. Now you're speaking my language. Will shake the people out of the haze. And also likely make them pretty damn cold. I don't really see what the plan here is. I guess the idea is you shake people out of their comfort zone and then they'll realize that Satan was controlling them the whole time or something like that. Seems like they're hinging on this idea that if we blow up a heat pillar, somehow Jesus, I mean altruist, sorry, not really the best thought out plan. Once the heat pillar is destroyed, it will be impossible to believe all the lies of Cosmos. So let me get this straight, Rogations. Again, your plan is to make people really cold. And somehow that will convince them the Altruist is a good guy. Now, I can't stress this enough. But this seems like a terrible and downright evil plan. Now imagine yourself uh, just a person living in Cosmos, going about your life. Then all of a sudden, the heat pillar, uh, the one thing that is literally keeping the Ice Age away from you. Because you see, it's not like this heat pillar is some sort of illusion creating device. No, it's an actual real honest to God heat pillar that is keeping snow away from your city. And then all of a sudden these terrorists destroy it. How the hell is that going to make you sympathetic to the terrorists? How is that supposed to open your eyes? If anything, it's going to make you downright hostile to the Rogations and hostile to the Altruists. Because they are the ones who destroyed your perfectly comfortable and agreeable life in the name of their god. I mean, you think about it. Invidious Umbra has done nothing evil. It's kept the people warm. It's kept them comfortable. It has kept them free from any danger. And there is legitimate danger out there. There is real snow. There are real things that want to kill you. But they're the bad guys. I mean, these rogations are so deluded. I mean, honestly, Alum is a great insight into the mind of a religious fanatic terrorist. These people have convinced themselves that by harming innocent people, even indirectly, because the game goes on, oh no, no one lives at the heat pillar, no one works there, it's all robots, it still does not change the fact there's a genuine ice age out there that's now coming to the city if the Rogation's plan succeed. And they're the good guys. Oh my god, the Rogations are a worser villain than the game's actual villain. So yeah, I'm convinced the Rogations are the bad guys. But anyway, let's keep on with the story. The artist who's married to the blind woman because the altruist has a sick sense of humor, but it doesn't really matter, he might as well drop dead because we'll never see him again. Yeah, he just exists to tell Dashi where to go and to give the Rogations somewhere to stay temporarily. Then he just fades into the ether. So yeah, he fulfills his purpose tells Dashu where to go and where to get explosives. It turns out there's an armory somewhere in the land of Tide. So that implies there was civilization before that had an armory and guns and there was a war. I don't know anything about the backstory of this universe. It does a terrible job of explaining itself. But that doesn't matter. We now know where to get explosives. So we head outside and hey look, it's the guy that quite literally killed half the Rogations because Satan told him to. Cool. Now, as you can imagine, this would be a pretty touching scene. Maybe you'd even have some sort of moral choice here, whether or not you kill the traitor, but no, Alum's not that heavy. Of course not, it's, it's a light and fluffy, confused game at this point. So basically, you forgive him because that's what Jesus would do. I mean, altruist, sorry, I gotta stop mixing my metaphors. But either way, yeah, he 
now redeemed or whatever. And Dash, you trust him because, again, the Rogations are the worst terrorist organization ever. So we make our way over to the armory and have to do some light puzzle solving. It's not particularly interesting, to be honest with you. You get inside, and then, oh, look, remember that arcade game from earlier on? Yeah, this is it. Again, but you dash you now, and it's real life. So you do that, and then you end up with explosives, and, well, now let's pick up where we left off with the plot. So this is it. Is everyone ready? As ready as we'll ever be, Captain. I wish Kaya was here. We all do, Elsie. He was a good man. Let's do this for him. And for Saya and Elias. And Olga and Igloo. Yeah. Talk about awkward. I'll cover you with my sniper once you get to the heat pillar. Jacob, we can't erase the past. But the altruist has done it for us. Sharing his truth is something worth fighting for. Set the C4 when you're ready. And we'll get this party started, boss man. So again, I'm convinced the altruist's truth is he wants people to be cold and miserable because, well, the altruist is lazy and is probably jealous that Nvidia's Umbra is actually doing stuff for people, so the altruist can't have that. Nevertheless, what we have here is a little action sequence. We gotta shoot the robots that are heroically defending the heat pillar from terrorists. Well, Dashu sets the C4. It's an action sequence in an adventure game. You can skip it if you don't like it. But nevertheless, because I played Sniper Elite, I had mad sniper skills and clicked my way into, well, wanton destruction and ruining people's lives. All clear, Captain. Now just plant that last C4, and we're out of here. Dashu, stop! Okay, we're done being Dashu now. Alum's back, off developing his character somewhere off screen. I mean, what else would you expect? It's not like the game's named after him or anything like that. Dashu, you don't need to do this. Peace can be found here in Cosmos. Alum, what are you talking about? You know what the peace is in Cosmos. It's a facade. It's only blinding the people from the vague. The altruist is a liar. Wow. It's almost like Alum's suddenly become a sane character. Maybe he's going to start arguing for a non-violent means of changing Cosmos for the better. Surely that would be an interesting plot development. He couldn't help Esther. Oh my god. I think I've made it very clear at this point how much I despise this part of the game. Really. Alum, get over your damn self. This whole Esther thing's getting really annoying. We can't let the people live without having a chance to hear the truth. Invidious Umbra's strength over Cosmos is almost full. Soon people will be so set in his ways, there'll be no reaching them. I still don't understand their plan here. I don't think I'll ever understand the mind of a religious fanatic terrorist. The Vague will have them forever, Alum. I have to do this. Alum. I'm sorry, Dashu. Alum, stop. Just think about this. What are you doing? Arguably the right thing. My friend promised me. As long as I keep Cosmos running, she will remove Mr. Glim. She can help me get Esther back. Your friend? Yes, Dashu. I am Adelina. Let's talk. What are you? I am the angel of love, peace, and happiness. The most powerful of all the angels. She's on our side, Dashu. We don't need to destroy the heat pillar. We can keep Cosmos and run it our way. Okay, Adelina. So let's say we get rid of Mr. Glim together. Then we run Cosmos in the name of peace, love, and happiness. What happens when we face the grave? You can choose the next ruler of Cosmos. Be sure it falls into good hands. That's not what I mean. What happens to the people of Cosmos who pass away without knowing the altruist? The fuck is he on about? Oh, afterlife and all that. Okay, so the here and now, 
don't mean jack shit to these people. That explains why they want to put others in complete and total misery, because it don't fucking matter to them, because they'll be with the altruists. So life is meaningless and has no purpose other than serving the altruist. That's a piece of shit. Why does this angel tear this motherfucker down? How can you worry about the future when there's so much good you can do today? Adelina's not for us, Alan. The unfeigned altruist is. I do apologize for my language, but holy shit, this is a death cult. Adelina is saying, hey, make you in charge, make the world a better place. You can do something tangible to improve the lives of others. But no, 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 you're so obsessed with death and being with your fucking god that you don't give a shit about other people other than yourselves. These people do not give a fuck about who they hurt or whose lives they ruin because it's all in the name of the altruist who will reward them upon death. People make jokes about 72 virgins and paradise, but holy shit, this is the same thing here, folks. Except there's no virgins. These people get fucking shit all except being with a lazy motherfucking guy who does nothing for anyone and wants to destroy people's comfortable, nice existence because he's jelly. They ain't all focused on his piece of shit lazy ass. Alum, he wants to destroy Cosmos. This has been your home all your life. This is where you met Esther. If he's not with us, he is against us. That's you. Just leave. Please, go back to Slip Town and share your rushlight there. Yes, leave Cosmos out of your holy war. Deceiver! No, 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 that's some truth bounds right there. That is fact. What she is saying. I'm not going to leave people in the dark like this. You'll have to shoot me. Actually, there's an alternative ending where you get a kill, dash you. And you get to shoot Mr. Glim and then take over Cosmos. Arguably, this is the good ending. Well done, Alan. You've chosen wisely. Now come here and watch the door with your gun. Alan? Adelina? Why did you call me up here? Shoot him, Alan. After all he's put you through? Yes, you have overcome evil. Now give me Esther. Of course, my friend. But of course that isn't the real ending, no. Obviously, Alum shoots the angel, Mr. Glim shows up, blah blah blah. Then literally a complete ass pull occurs, right when it looks like our hero's about to die in an unescapable situation. <sighs> Fuck this game. Enough is enough. Goodbye, Alan. What's this? My teleport potion, it worked! Alan, look out! So yeah, that was pretty damn dumb. I guess the writer wrote himself into a corner there and couldn't find a better way to get out of it. So naturally, Alum's not going to get harmed. He'll drink some potion and meet up with the altruist and plead his case or whatever. And oh yeah, all the rogations get caught. And it seems like Mr. Glim, who was originally very keen on shooting people on the spot, suddenly says no. And they're going to be executed later because of a stupid plot. Betrayal. Friends are counting on you. You are obsessed over Esther for your own selfish ambition. No! Again, Satan just dropping truth bombs here. He is being honest with these people. No, it can't be. I'm feigned. I need you. Alum. Oh, please help. I need you, altruist. <laughs> that is the most unconvincing voice acting I have ever heard. Oh, please help, altruist. <laughs> oh my god, this game's getting to me. I ruined everything. Do not fear. I am here with you. Altruist. Peace is returning. You are what I was longing for. 
all this time. Uh, y- yeah, the, when you say it like that, it sounds super homoerotic. And the way he's positioned, it sounds like the altruist is going to fuck him. I want you to throw yourself on me and rest. Wow, it, it, it just got worse. Um, the, yet the altruist is going to fuck Alan. But yeah, he, he's, hopefully he doesn't bareback him. But I... Shh. Um, this is really uncomfortable. I think Alan's a virgin. I love you. Listen to me. How did you find me? I never left. I was waiting for you to call on me. I made a promise. I will never leave you, Alan. I know now that I can't control Esther. My bitterness overwhelmed me, and I believe the Umbers lies. Alan has some character development. It's very sudden and, well, almost jarring. He realizes now that he can't control Esther and that he was kind of a selfish prick. Conveniently, too, God now has some plans for Alum. Let's just fast forward that part, because the rest of this just gets pretty damn talky. Where am I? You are in Mount Hased. This is where I was planning on bringing you and the Rogations, back when you washed up in Sliptown. I went my own way. I can't change it. The past is gone forever. I brought you here despite yourself. Now listen closely. This sanctuary was built by an ancient civilization long ago. They knew me and followed me intently. Hmm, was that civilization called America? You did it! You did it to yourselves, damn you! I forget the rest of it, but of course this sounds interesting. And of course, the game will go into no further details. Because you have to squash every interesting idea you can. If you're Alum. Why am I here? The statue in front of you is the controller to a great power, lying dormant in this mountain. Through my inspiration, the ancients had it constructed. So this loving, caring altruist demanded that people who followed him build a mech. Okay, that's definitely an interesting twist on things kind of hard to buy that the altruist is all for peace and love when he's building fucking mechs it is called the dunamis i want you to work with me to make it operational again then you will wield it for your own once the dunamis is up and running what will i do with it the great pass between outer tide and inner tide is inhabited by an ice giant named og what does God need with a mech? Seriously, this reminds me of that scene in Star Trek V where Kurt asks God, what does he need with a starship? What does the altruist need with a mech? I'm waiting for the answer, because the game doesn't answer it. I guess we're going to have to forget about that question if we're going to get further on in the game. God wants Alan to go to four different places and solve some puzzles for him, because he's too busy smoking J's and, I don't know, being inactive. It's too much work to do anything to help people. So Alan... Goes about and solves some puzzles that we're going to skip over because honestly, do you really care? So anyway, Alan makes his way to find the bits. And hey, that's that lady that was going crazy earlier. Alan pushes her out of an ice cave and that fixes her. I don't know. I didn't write this. Where am I? Yay, she's fixed now, and she's another pointless character that does nothing. You may think, hey, maybe she's going to be Alan's love interest now. No, she just hangs out with Alan and does nothing because that's what she does. Again, none of the secondary characters are going to do anything. Don't expect people to actually do things in the world of Alan. Except Alan. Like this other character he meets, who, well, yeah, just listen to her. I think she's some sort of elf. What you doing here? Huh? Huh? I'm, I'm... I'm not buying it. I'm looking for a special shield. A shield? You're off your rocker. Get out of my lair before I dice you up. Uh, I was just on my way. No, wait. I'm just messing with you. What? Yeah, come on back. Poor guy. You should have seen your face. Who are you? My name's Gwen, and I'm a Corku. Corkus are a race. Not much unlike your own. We're just way better at pretty much everything. Swimming, fighting, eating, building, you know, everything. 
Me and my bro have been living down here for a few years now. Your brother? Yeah, he's kind of a nerd. I love action. Flying, running, fighting, adventure. He's into science. He says science is an adventure. I'm actually a little worried about him. He went out on some science expedition three days ago, and I haven't seen him since. Where did he go? That guy? Who knows? I'm sure he'll be all right. So anyway, what are you doing here? Yeah! It is pretty interesting. This is the first time we meet a character whose problems can't be solved by shoving a rushlight in their face. Nevertheless, her brother's missing. We gotta save him because it also coincides with us killing the giant and all that jazz. In fact, let's just edit it out to the point where the brother is saved. I'm going to skip over a big chunk of the game here because you don't really need to see it. The giant, of course, is a pretty nice guy. Actually, let's meet this giant now that he's drunk. He doesn't seem all that bad. He actually sounds like a pretty nice dude who's just doing what he's doing. Yeah, our evil villain, everyone. Who doesn't kill things when he should. <sighs> I guess the villains are lazy in this game, too. Hot second thought. Why not stay in chat? Sure, big fella. You see, what's interesting here is that Alum fed this giant man poison soup. It's called poison soup in the inventory, but he's acting drunk. Are the makers of this game trying to imply that alcohol is poison as I chug my beer? Mmm, <sighs> delicious poison, folks. Burp. <laughs> Big fella. <laughs> You're a funny little man. I could crush your skull with the bat of my eyelash. Oh. <laughs> So whoop the friggin' do! Alum kills another nice guy eventually, but first we save a little elf lady's brother, who sounds like a New York Jew. Hmm, that's an interesting choice there. Party time. That's it. It's over. My only chance of a savior has lost his mind. Can I have that poison back? That's it. It worked! By the sciences, you're a genius! Now let's get out of here, Harold. So woohoo! Alum saves the guy. He now has all the bits to make the mech. The mecha Jesus, if you will. Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. Yes, I edited out a bunch. I feel like reiterating that. There's a bit more to this section of the game, but it's none too interesting, to be honest with you. It's just puzzle solving. And truth be told, a lot of the puzzles in Alum are pretty damn good. So I'd hate to spoil that for you if you ever intend on playing this game, which, I don't know, maybe you will. I'm not you. Alum, you're the man. With the plan, I guess. So that does it for this part of Overanalyze Adventures Alum. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. Next time will be the epic finale of Alum. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this as much as I enjoy making it. This is a pretty damn fun series for me. All right, folks, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You are what I was longing for all this time. I want you to throw yourself on me and rest.